Hey guys, welcome back to Heiko Shaves 2024. We're through the holidays, through um, New Year's Eve and all that stuff. Uh, we had lots of visitors. Uh, we had eight kids in our house at some point in time. And of course there wasn't really any shaving going on, in, at least not in front of camera. But uh, now we're in 2024, things are going back to normal schedule and Heiko needs to shave. Uh, I think I'm growing up in my shaving game. Uh, you guys know that I have a scuttle now, which I'm regularly using and experimenting with, and I really like it. I like the warm feel, especially when it's cold outside. Today is not super cold outside, so we're just going to use, you know, my my cat food bowl. Someone told me that those little collapsible shaving bowls sold other places as cat food bowls, and those uh, those those nipples here are supposed to slow the cat down. The the food falls in between, and they have a harder time getting it out. It's possible. I mean, this thing is like, what, five bucks or so. Um, why not? But it works as a shave bowl as well. We haven't used it in a while, so let's use this today. So let's talk about what we're gonna be using. Remember the package from Bill? Bill sent me like a whole setup of PAA products, and we're gonna shave with some PAA stuff today. Um, let me backtrack. Let me backtrack a little, a little bit. I have a couple of those containers where all your guys' uh, support goes into until it makes it in front of camera. Um, it's pretty nice, those containers are, uh, let me show you the top. They are more or less airtight. They have a silicone rubber seal up in here and they have those clip-on latches on the side. So they are more or less airtight. That means that uh, scented items, soaps and aftershaves and whatnot, they don't bleed off their uh, scent all that quickly. So this is how I store the channel support. I have a couple of those boxes. Uh, one case is just stuff that I have already used um, and I'm not planning anything at the moment with just as a storage solution because I can't put all this stuff into my bathroom. I only have one cabinet here down below my sink and I have this lineup up here and that's it and I don't want to drive my wife crazy with all the shaving gear here in this bathroom so I have one box with unused or barely used stuff one box that gets all the stuff that you know takes a break from filming and uh, will be maybe revisited at a later point and uh, so yeah that's that kind of box that I store my stuff in uh, I get another package from supply and they um, sent me a Injector razor and soap and healing post shave. That's a good name. It heals you. And there is a brush in here and a razor. But that's not the topic of today's video. I just wanted to share with you guys. Um, you know, since we did some injector razors, we had the PAL and the Parker. Parker, by the way, are very surprisingly good for what it is. Um, and now we have another injector razor, the Supply. I don't know which model. They have a couple of models in their inventory. I don't know. I haven't looked at it. We are going to look at it together. Today I want to do a PAA shave with some of the stuff that Bill sent over for Christmas. And here is a beautiful... It's the Cyclotrode from PAA. And here's the Cyclotrode uh, close-up at the bottom. So uh, you guys remember, I, I was kind of harping on this uh, company, myblades.com, and that they are not forthcoming with where they make their products. And I already made a follow-up short little video telling you guys that uh, I actually had email contact with them and they told me that their blades are made in Pakistan. Now that we're past this point, we know my blades. Blades are not made in Germany. They are maybe made with German steel, but they are made in Pakistan. We're past that. We're gonna actually try to use them today. I have a package here also from Bill. And since I don't have any Phoenix or PAA blades, we're gonna use this. We're gonna use my blades. These are the platinum version. If you buy the platinum from my blades, uh, they are like 30 bucks for a hundred blades. They must be pretty special. That's a pretty stout price. Um, and then let's talk about the razor. We're gonna put those into. It's here in a nondescript safety razor from PAA box. And in there is something really shiny. Someone in the comment section pointed out to me that uh, PAA also doesn't really tell anyone where they make their stuff. 
And I emailed them really quickly, just asked them, hey, can you guys tell me where you guys make your stuff? And then I get a little bit um, very generic response. It's kind of like, oh, that's too complicated to list that all because we have different items made in different places. If you have a specific question about a specific razor, we can tell you, but we can't list it on our webpage. I think they should all be forthcoming about this. So I'm assuming this is all overseas. There is no you know, made in, if it would be in the, made in the USA, they would print it on it somewhere. So the box doesn't say where it's made. The item doesn't say where it's made. This is their double open comb in chrome plated. Uh, they have a few different versions and they, you know, they, they stop making one model and then a few years later they come out with a, you know, redesign or whatever. So this is the DOC as they call it, double open comb. I don't know why there's nothing written on the box. Unfortunately, we're going to use that one. Uh, Bill told me that it was a little too aggressive for him. So we're just going to put this over here. Like I said, my cyclo Cyclotrode 24 millimeter Phoenix shaving since 2012. I also wanted to show you, I'm, like I said, I'm growing up in my shaving game. I now have a mug that I'm going to be using to pre-soak brushes. This is synthetic, so you don't really have to because they, they don't soak up any water. It's a synthetic fiber. Uh, but if you would, let's say, you would use a badger, like my self-made badger here, you stick that in there, then get everything else ready. And by the time you are ready to actually go into your face, uh, the, the bristles will have softened up. They will have absorbed some of the water and make it much more enjoyable. But yeah, not today. We're just going to use a synthetic cyclotrode and atomic pumpkin uh when i did the unboxing you already saw it this is paa star jelly aftershave so this is a jelly type aftershave so it's not liquidy comes out of a little dispenser bottle here let's open this up Boop. and i've not tried it i had it in a shopping cart different scent but the same star jelly aftershave in the shopping cart but i've never purchased it so today we're going to try that out and then we have the matching atomic pumpkin soap and you guys know the the formula ck6 it's, it's kind of like um fall you know the harvesty you have a pumpkin sitting outside your house with a face carved into it halloween type it's a relatively soft soap so we're not going to go right in here, but we are going to use our cat food bowl <laughs> and my little spoon here. This is specific to uh, shaving. Bought this from shavenation.com, you know, Geo Fat Boy. Uh, they have those tiny little, they're much smaller than a teaspoon, tiny little. And I just scrape out a little bit like this much usually. So you don't put any water in your soap. So the container stays clean. It's non-contaminated so to speak and then i take that off usually with my finger you know it's kind of a involved process and then i just smear it at the bottom of the shave bowl if you like and you want to um what should i call it bloom your soap you can put a sip of water on top of that and just let it sit while you while you prepare everything else yeah so the soap can soak soap can soap up or soak up the soap can soak up some water and uh, get ready for the lathering. Um, and then you can already close up your soap container. I really like the standardized normal soap container size here. They can stack on top of each other really nicely and take up very little space. Yeah, I'm not going to show you this angle here, but man, do I have a lot of gear sitting here. <laughs> this is a crazy hobby. It's, it's going crazy. So we have the razor. Let's put a blade in there. I haven't opened my my blades package from Bill here. Open here. It says open here. Always have a hard time getting those cardboard boxes open. There you go. And then apparently they have like the wisdom of the day printed on the paper wrapper here. It says, "Do what is right, not what is easy." Yes, Mr. Miyagi. Double wrapped. So outer paper is the one that has all the printing on it. And then the, the next layer looks kind of like wax paper. I don't know for sure what it is. It doesn't feel like wax paper, but there's no printing on it. And then the blades themselves, they just say my blades and have the brand logo on it. And uh, yeah, the guy that got back to me, I mentioned that already in my short follow-up, uh, was actually a German guy, I think. 
So he explained, you know, that they have special contracts with the steel manufacturing plants to really make sure they get a lot of uh, recycled steel in there and where it's made in the European Union and all that stuff. Um, on this double open comb, you have the blade tab sticking out. That's very unfortunate. I, I'm always afraid to, you know, the, the, the blades are usually like a 0.1 millimeter in thickness. And 0.1 millimeters, even if it's not sharpened, is sharp enough to cut in your skin. So you got to be careful. So um, now we have a blade in there. And uh, the interesting thing with all those double open comb razors and more or less, we just recently did a shave with the uh, Fazan where the blade actually sits right on the open comb and there's not a real blade gap at all. Um, and so you really only get the cutting action in between the prongs, in between those teeth. So blade in here, we're ready to go. Um, shall we do some pre-shave? Yeah, I think so. It's a new year. Let's let's start out responsibly, especially since Bill told me that the PAA double open comb is a pretty feisty one, pretty aggressive one. Um, I have tried the Yachi. Is that correct? Was it a Yachi? I always want to say Yaki. Uh, the Yachi double open comb head with a generic handle. And that was also pretty feisty here. Let me see if I find it real quick. Just to remind you, here is my Yachi collection. Um, here it is. I literally had to whoop, write the name on the top or else I wouldn't have remembered. Looks very similar. It's a little bit less curved. So this is a more flat profile. And this one here is a little bit more curved in its appearance, as you can see. So this is PAA, the other one is Yaki. Who knows where PAA has their razors made. I didn't want to go into detail. I'm assuming it's overseas, or else a razor like this wouldn't be as, as inexpensive if this would be Canadian or American made. All right, so now we have the razor ready, pre-shave in my face. We have our cyclotrode already wet, and we're gonna go right into our shave bowl that I had the soap bloom a little bit. Maybe it was a little bit too much blooming water, but I think we're gonna be able to work it up into a lather. And we can always take more soap. I have more soap than I will ever be able to finish in one shave. Okay, look at that. It's not very thick yet. It's still kind of very fluffy. So let's give this a little bit more work here. I'm slowly learning to be a little bit more patient with the lathering, um, especially when I'm using my uh, my scuttle now. You, you, it's, it seems like when, when soap is warm, it is a little harder to lather than when it's cold. And uh, someone in the comment section actually confirmed that, that some vegan soap formula, so the ones that don't have any beef tallow or stuff in there, um, that they don't lather up very well when you use warm water this looks already pretty good oh my goodness so i just ramble on a little longer while i'm working it here in my cat food bowl <laughs> i didn't buy this as a cat food bowl i didn't go to petco i bought this off of aliexpress as a shave bowl i think so yeah look at this <laughs> it's still very very light it's not very cream creamy. So let's put some warm water in my face. Let's soap in my hand and pre-shave in my hand and soap on my brush handle. Yeah, the 24 millimeter knot. Um, this one is shaped a little differently than, you know, look at this. Kind of you have the flat top and this is more the rounded. The rounded is way more typical or a common, here's another round. And uh, it looks like the PAA, this here's another PAA, they seem to be a little bit more flat at the top, but it doesn't matter as long as it lathers. I've noticed that the synthetic brushes are a little bit more squishy. They're not as stiff. I, I'm a big fan of the little bit more firm synthetic brushes. And it's really surprising how, um, how cheap some of those synthetic brushes are, and they still really, uh, they, they perform really well. 
my DS Cosmetic from AliExpress or my KIKC from Amazon. Um, yeah, uh, but someone shared in the comment section, you know who you are. Um, so like a Simpson Trafalgar or some of the Simpson brushes, uh, the, the, the English made, handmade brushes from England um, that are like 30, 40 bucks that they um, make the knot differently. So instead of, oh, in my nose. So instead of having just individual um, bristles and then they get squeezed together and then they put epoxy on it and the epoxy holds the individual uh, uh, bristles together. So I'm talking about the bottom end that goes into the, into the handle. Um, the Simpson ones are actually bristles that always make a loop at the bottom. So you always have two ends of one long piece of bristle and the, the loop goes into the glue or the epoxy and they also tie them at the bottom. So even the cheaper ones, the 30, 40, $50 brushes, they still have that and that makes them way more durable. So the epoxy doesn't let go of individual little bristles. Um, let's talk about the shave now. The pumpkin, it's a light pumpkin, spicy, little bit of a, a, you know, fall harvest kind of a scent, but very pleasant, not very strong. My face seems to not to react to it. It's very good. No burning sensation or anything. And here is the PAA double open comb, the, the aggressive one. Let's find out. Makes nice stripes, as you can see. Oh, I think. I can live with that level of aggression. This is about a day and a half of growth. Makes a little bit of noise. I'm slinging the lather all over my t-shirt. As I always do with the grain, the first pass. When you have a double open comb, you have to really make sure not to push too hard because in between the prongs, the blade is completely open. And if you push too hard on your skin, it, the skin will go in between the prongs and then potentially you cut yourself. So if you are easy on the pressure, it seems like the angle is pretty easily found here. Yeah, not too terrible. This is this is much much uh, more enjoyable than I thought it would be. Even here in my problem zone, as long as you keep the pressure under control and the Adam Adam's apple out of the way. Yeah, it cuts right in there. Uh, let me talk about the blades, the platinum blades. Um, I'm, I don't get much tugging. Tugging is usually an indication for a dull blade, especially if you have a little bit more growth. And you know, in my goatee section here, even after a day and a half, I have plenty of material there. Doesn't tug, seems to be sharp enough to mow right through. Now it would be interesting to have maybe two of the same razor and have a silver blade, my blade silver, and the my blades platinum next to each other and kind of compare. Yeah, so far razor and blade seems to be working. Of course there is still stuff left because we're going with a growth direction. You notice that I was going up the hill here because all my beard hair roughly to this point is growing down the hill and down here it's growing up the hill. So I'm going with the grain. I'm pretty um, uh, careful about that, especially on the first pass. And uh, let's just wipe off a little bit here. Put a little bit more water on the face and lather up again. So 
So yeah, talking about the brushes, uh, the Simpson, I don't own one yet, but um, I think this argument about quality and how long they last and how, how differently they are made from all those cheaper Chinese brushes that I have here. Um, I think I might try to get my hands on some Simpson brush, either buy one or ask if Simpson wants to send one over and then, you know, make up our mind about it. If a $50 brush is really better than a $10 brush. But uh, I guess if you really just buy one brush and you use it all the time and it really lasts five, six, seven years and a AliExpress purchase lasts only a year, then you're really not saving any money going with a cheap one, right? All right, let's do across the grain. That's always my second pass and oftentimes my last pass because after uh, across the grain with a relatively efficient razor, I'm already so clean that I don't really feel like doing a third pass. You see me inflate my, my cheek like this. That's making sure I get the wrinkles out of the way. Oh, you can hear it cutting. I'm holding this thing very loosely, very, very relaxed in my fingers so the thing can glide over my skin. A little bit doing its own thing, so to speak. And not push the skin too far in between the prongs. Mm -hmm. Kind of get the feeling this is going to be all we're going to need today. Like I said, for the last week or so, we had a family in the house with my three kids plus five other kids. And there was so much family activity that I didn't really get to uh, get to shave with you guys. And uh, in 2024, I will also try to be a little bit more organized with my video releases. So when I shave a video, this is the video that's gonna come out I don't know if you guys noticed, but there is a little bit of some backlog of some videos and then I release them and then I have a fresh haircut in one video, but not in the next video. And I want to be a little bit more organized about all this. All right. Now this thing is doing a pretty good job. I think the problem is when someone goes from a system razor, you know, like the Gillette sensor or the Fusion or whatever, and um, they are used to laying this, this system razor on their skin and pushing and, you know, shaving like this. They are used to maybe exerting a little bit much, uh, too much pressure. And when you then switch to a safety razor like this one here, where there is a sharp implement there and if you get your skin in the way, it will make you bleed. Um, once you make your peace with being very light footed, so to speak, um, tap dancing around your skin and not pushing too hard, I think you will actually enjoy um, shaving like this much better than with a system razor. I enjoy this so much that I have not touched any other shaving method ever since I started in May, 2023. So all my shaves that I do, even at 6 a.m. before work, are the DE shave. Not with a scuttle usually, I just, you know, get my Parasso Green out in a brush and just real quick two passes. The twig and the, the thorn are involved very often. But I'm also still using, it's currently taken apart here to dry, the, the razor company, you know, the DE razor that they make aluminum handle, stainless steel inserts and all that stuff. The one that I was really impressed by, it's very mild, 
but very efficient at the same time. So you don't have the risk of cutting your face open at 6 a.m. This is the worst that can happen. Start out, the, out your day. All right, let's do a little bit of a cleanup pass here. We're going to go against the grain on my neck. Very little pressure. See the little stripes? So the razor leaves behind some soap that gives you extra protection for some plate buffing. You can also help that a little bit by just having some on your fingers. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty pleasantly surprised. But hey, if you are truly new to this, don't feel bad if, you know, one or the other razor that I say is really mild or it's very, you know, enjoyable and you buy the same thing and you cut your face up, don't be frustrated. Give it a few tries, be gentle, maybe just do one pass or two pass, don't go overboard. Be gentle on the pressure and you will eventually, first of all, your skin will build up a tolerance against sharp implements scraping along. Uh, your technique will improve. And I'm speaking from experience now because um, I've only been doing this for a little over half a year and my technique has improved to the point that I can take relatively spicy, aggressive uh, razors and uh, put a sharp blade in it and still get away with out much harm. So double open comb, relatively known to be relatively aggressive, but still I can do a shave with it without harming myself. So it's all about the technique, I think. Of course, there are different skin types. This section here in my skin is definitely very sensitive. I guess it's, it's um, rougher, the surface of my skin is rougher. And so it's much easier to catch a piece of your own skin and cut yourself. But uh, you will build up a little bit more tolerance, especially if you shave frequently. If you shave almost every day and you keep the stubbles down uh, and you will not e even need a three pass every single day. You can just do a two pass so you get to like 98% smooth and then just be happy with it and practice, 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 practice your lathering, practice your shaving and give it a few months. And before you know it, you're gonna be so in tune with your face which direction what is growing here you know I have growing this way this way and this section here grows that way so you know um, you will get in in tune in in tune with your own skin and uh, before you know it you can actually pick up something more aggressive and still get away with it I have mentioned that I would like to try out a Müller R41 everyone everyone out there says it's harsh aggressive, whatnot. But then there are a few people that say, you know, as long as you respect it and you follow your proper procedure, you can shave with that thing. And maybe one day we're going to verify that and make sure that, you know, this is not just talking up a big game, but it's actually doable. And yeah, we'd like to see. So let's rinse off real quick. All right, so fresh towel, always feels good. Very nice. I do the tap, 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 not the rubbing. I don't wanna agitate my skin even more. And yeah, um, even when I shave warm, I usually rinse off cold. That kind of, you know, pulls your skin back together. Uh, and now we're gonna use this one here, the Atomic Pumpkin. I really like the artwork they put on, on their packaging. It's pretty cool. And there's always the little Phoenix company logo in there. I have no idea where this stuff is made either. I wish manufacturers would just proudly produced in Vietnam or maybe it's made in the US, who knows? I mean, soap makers, I guess it's more common to have soap makers around than having actual razor manufacturers here in the US. There are only a few and uh, that usually is reflected in the price. That's why I was pleasantly pr surprised. Oh, I need to pump a little bit here. Here we go. It's coming in. Yeah, very creamy, pretty thick. 
Oh yeah. This is like a pumpkin spice latte plus some fruitiness. Mm -hmm. It's a jelly. It's It has a little bit of the burn factor. Like I always mention, I have pretty dry skin up here. And whenever I use something that contains alcohol, it even burns up here, even though I ref uh, try not to shave up there. Let's see, does it say alcohol on it? Water, ethanol. Ethanol is a type of alcohol for sure. It, meh, well, I don't know, I can't read it. Um, I'll leave a link down below to PIA. Why don't you check out the ingredients list? I'm always just look. oh yeah, here's the pheno oxy ethanol which is a preservative which some people are a little hesitant to use because of some stuff that it can do you to do to your body um yeah it's it almost has a little bit of a spice scent to it not just pumpkin but like spicy pumpkin but pretty good makes the skin really smooth it it dries up or soaks in really fast it doesn't have an oily feel to it which a lot of the lotions and and aftershave bombs have even though there is glycerin in here all right yeah i guess the products work paa that works this is like dry smooth skin now and not oily not sticky uh, i like it it has you know a little bit of some zest to it so this puppy here and this puppy so uh, I don't know, since the season is kind of over, we're going into, you know, the later part of the wit, or not later part, January, February, and then the pumpkin spice gets put away, I guess, and then we will get it back out of the box in the fall. Uh, but overall, you know, PIA brush, pretty good. It's kind of a mess. Can't even see it under all that lather. The soap lathered up really well. We still have lather for the next three shaves in here. <laughs> um, and uh, the My Blades Platinum in the PIA double open comb, yeah, they perform well. Probably made in Pakistan with German steel, maybe, or European steel. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, I, I like this little razor. It's uh, you know, there's the, the the Phoenix at the bottom from PIA. The knurling is pretty good. Chrome handle. I don't know exactly what material the the handle is made of it could be brass yep looks like brass color on the inside here the bottom so this is a piece of brass and then probably conventionally machined and then chrome plated this is probably zinc zinc alloy and then chrome plated but yeah this little puppy worked we still have the this one here the Mercua 41c so c always chrome they're kind of similar. This is not a double open comb. I like this a lot too, when there's a blade in it. Still very mild, even though it's an open comb. You just gotta get the pressure under control. Yeah. So, you know, this could be someone's daily. You know, if they, not everyone gets into the crazy habit of having 50 razors at home. If you just wanna have one and you're looking for a little bit more efficiency, yeah, this is a good one. I feel pretty smooth, even though we only did like two and a half passes. All right, guys, now I'm just rambling. Uh, that's all I can say about those PAA products. The, the Cyclotron, the, no, the Cyclotrode, that's what it is, Cyclotrode. The DOC and the Atomic Pumpkin, pretty good products. Thumbs up. All righty, guys. Again, thanks for all your support, for your comments, the conversations we sometimes have in the comment section. Send me some emails if you like, um, email in the about section, and I will see you in the next one with something out of this blue box. 